So we're happy to have you here with us. Today's episode, we're joined by an absolute tea guru. We are here with Nate Pantalone. Yeah, you got it. Pantalone. Nate and I, um, Troy and I were trying to figure out if, how to pronounce that. Pantalone. Um, Nate Pantalone of the Dobra Tea House in Squirrel Hill. Nate, thanks for being with us here today. Thanks for having me, Dave. It's super great to have you in studio. It's um, Dobra's a n- very nice uh, tea house. Troy, I know you've spent significant time there. Uh, it's a great place to work. What would you say? Um, I mean, before doing any work with Nate, I was a frequent customer because of my girlfriend. Shout out to Joy. She brought me there for the first time. And as a writer, you know, it's it's super easy to get work done. Um, I love the fact that it's like it's got this um, overseas type of feel in a sense like you could like take your shoes off and get really comfortable. Hopefully you don't have smelly feet. Um, but yeah, overall, <laughs> just like a comfortable, <laughs> cool place. I got a lot of work done there. Yeah, it's it's absolutely. When you step in there, you're literally um, being transferred to somewhere else. It's not. It's no longer Murray Avenue in Squirrel Hill. It's a wonderful space. It's very comforting and warm. Um, and that's why I'm super excited. Um, before we get into floating, Nate, can you take us back to what started your interest in tea? Yeah, sure. So. I uh, hope the story is not too long. Let me know. When I was in college, my buddy and I were drinking tea to study. At least that was what we told ourselves initially. And it, it ended up being more or less a, a talk session, a, a time for connection, a mm. little bit of gossip, uh, spilling the tea. Spilling as the they, tea. As they say, yeah. You Look know. at you. And it ended up uh, being a, a ritual for us that we do that. We found a, a comfortable little tea shop after a few months and just spent a lot of time there over the years Mm. through college found tea drinking as a good way to socialize relax Mm. have a good time and then uh we we turned it into kind of a a ritual outside of the tea room we turned it into a, a blog and after college uh i turned it into a a career so it was uh I actually originally wanted him to do it with me, yeah. but he decided that he he'd rather stick with his uh, more like traditional career path, and that's cool. And right on, he probably are, yeah. is jealous every day that he has <laughs> a nine to five, and you are running the show, doing your thing, and you know sailing the ship your way, man. Good on you. Um, it takes a lot of bravery, especially when the partner um, doesn't just and you know maybe you got scared, maybe you had family early. There's there's a lot of reasons yeah. why, but the fact that you stayed the course past that, man, good on you because your tea house is very successful. And I guess, can you talk us through opening a tea house in Pittsburgh, how that was, the process? Yeah, sure. It was uh, it was actually a long and somewhat difficult process. Um, we had troubles finding a space initially. We had troubles with the uh, uh, original landlord that we were trying to work with, mm-hmm. just lots of broken promises or or unfulfilled promises types of things uh that was frustrating we started in i want to say april of 2013 Mm -hmm. or or sorry 2012 excuse me april 2012 and we weren't open until march of 2013 so it took almost a whole year to get everything everything together we had problems with customs trying to get our our tea into the country Mm -hmm. um trying to get furniture into the country like we we imported a lot of our rugs and things that we got trying to get those in through customs and everything was delayed we had troubles with contractors as every i hear from everybody this is like a perennial issue uh yeah just <clears throat> troubles everywhere you know but it, it was worth it in the end i know you got lots of, you got to go through it man. yeah you, yeah, you yeah. have to absolutely go through it now the fact that you're set there and everything's so genuine that's where that transference comes from where you walk in and um you know everything's authentic in the way that it should be so that's where that transference comes from all of that trouble you had and dealt with it was worth it, it yeah was worth it. yeah it was why uh squirrel hill squirrel hill is a, is an amazing neighborhood in in the city uh, like a, a gem in pittsburgh i think there's different types of people here it's kind of a crossroads in the in the center of the city or maybe the the east side of the city where you get people traveling all over the place um 
buses, tons of buses run through there here. The parkway is right next to it. Um, there's like the neighborhood so big. There's a north and south side of Squirrel Hill. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just walking around here, you see like everything that Pittsburgh has to offer. Yeah. You see all these different businesses in one place. Mm-hmm. You don't see the same type of thing anywhere else in the city, except maybe downtown, but it's different. It's a more business nine to five type of vibe. And this is a, this feels like a proper like neighborhood, like a, a place where people can really come relax. You know, it feels like a real lived in space. And that's why we chose Squirrel Hill. Right on. I mean, all the things that being here in our sixth year, it's totally agree. You I mean, you see families walking in the streets. There's, there's farmers markets when the weather's nice. There's a good community. It's, it's spot on, man. It fits extremely well. Yeah. Um, so being open for so long, can you, um, you seen any major trends in the tea industry? Any changes? Yeah, there's, tea in Pittsburgh has become more popular. And part of that has to do with us, us being here that we actively try to, to educate our customers on traditional teas from around the world. Um, try to make tea brewing part of everyday life. Try to make it accessible and easy because, a lot of people in Pittsburgh are coffee people. Their their parents maybe just drank iced tea in the summertime, Lipton or whatever. Then uh, they they know how to make a pot of coffee, but they might not know how to make a pot of tea. And we try to teach traditional tea methods and, and also try to teach just basic, easy tea at home methods. Uh, frankly, like historically, tea has just been a drink of the people. It's why it's the most common drink besides water in the world. And just a lot of people in Pittsburgh don't know how to do it and that's kind of a little hurdle we we try to help people with so what and the as far as major trends go there was the big matcha craze a few years ago everybody was talking about matcha how it's gonna cure cancer and whatever and uh that's died off thankfully but uh yeah the chai is always popular people love chai that type of thing have you converted a bunch of coffee drinkers probably a few uh i think I think more we've we've shown coff- like a few coffee drinkers that tea can also be good. Like my dad really likes masala chai now. He was a black coffee type of dude, and and uh, we made him a really strong cup of masala chai, and that's that's his go-to, and he has it every so often now. Not still not full convert. Making that conversion from somebody that is a hardcore coffee drinker to the masala chai. What is it about the masala chai that overlays so well for the coffee drinker? It's the strength, the strength of it. Yeah. The, like my dad's a, a burnt steak, black, black burnt coffee type of dude. And Get it. <laughs> so he likes the really strong spice, the strong black tea of the masala chai, the stronger caffeine level in the, in the masala chai. And that's the, that's where that crossover is uh, for him at least. Very interesting. I think it's one of when first stopped in Adobra and to see how you guys brew your tea. I think it was so fascinating and as we got to chat a little bit before coming in, um, just the elements you use. Can you talk us through kind of just making tea at Dobra and what that kind of means for your guests? Yeah, you mean elements in elements in what way? Like what we use to inspire us or the or the, the physical elements of making tea? Both. Both, okay. So we followed what's called the the naturalist school of tea it's kind of a chinese uh philosophical way of of doing tea where you uh you try to showcase the color of the liquid the liquor of the tea with using white pottery uh in in the cup so that it shows the real color of the tea leaves you you don't use cups that have like a a colorful center because that can uh, can kind of obscure the the real true color of the tea and we try to brew the leaves without any milk without any sugar by and large there's a few traditional exceptions but to make the tea the primary object of of what we're showing off so we brew a lot of our teas are just the tea leaves and water nothing else there's no other ingredients there's no anything else and it to do that we change our water temperature so we, we always boil our water. It's part of traditional tea brewing is to clean the water by boiling it. That mm-hmm. makes it more or less sterile, mm-hmm. um, pasteurized or whatever you want to, however you want to call it. Mm-hmm. And then we bring it down to a temperature sometimes, a lower temperature that 
we feel is best for brewing the tea leaves. Some green teas are more sensitive to heat. They like a colder temperature. It showcases the flavor better. Some th- teas like black teas need that hotter water, pull out the flavor mm. to show it better um, because it takes more heat and stuff to make the black tea compared to the green tea. And in doing that, we we feel that it it most honors the, the flavor of the tea, that we, we try to present it in a traditional way. A lot of these teas have been made in China or Japan for for decades or uh, often cases hundreds of maybe even a thousand years mm. and we're calling back to those traditions trying to, to hold those traditions of the Chinese or Japanese whichever whichever tea traditions they have in our pottery in our presentation things like that that's awesome and fascinating I think that's what uh, sparked my interest in you to hear you talk about tea and there's absolutely no way that someone can hear that y- your descriptions and not be like I want to go to his tea house and try that tea for the dedication you have to the craft. It, it, it's amazing. And that's so fascinating to hear you speak on it because growing up in Western PA, I, Lipton tea, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or the, the whatever, the dissolved stuff. So to have that um, availability here in Pittsburgh, Squirrel Hill, right up the way from our studio, like I just think it's a fascinating thing. Um, yeah, you really... Um sharing culture mm. with uh, a completely different group of people, which is amazing. Like, I thought it was fascinating to learn, like, the, what you said about the the white pottery. And even just, like, us talking the other day, how uh, you said traditional tea ceremony is called uh, Gung Fu Cha. I think that's just really unique, that uh, all the steps that you take to bring the best product to people. Mm-hmm. And just being like, true to it. Like, th- and that's what that's what makes it so successful for you. I mean, Dover Tea House, that's, it's a destination. People travel there not only to be able to uh, transport into the traditional way, but to be able to experience that because they can't get it anywhere else. That's what makes it so special. Hey, real quick, um, tell everyone what Dober actually means. Please. So Dobra means good in, in a lot of Slavic languages. And our, we draw ours specifically from Czech. So it, our, our name, in essence, means good tea. So we're Dobra tea, good tea. Um, and that's what we try to provide is good tea. We try to provide it at a, at a reasonable price. We don't think that tea should be for elite people, that we try to get tea that's only re- what we think is reasonably priced mm-hmm. for the amount of effort and everything that went into producing it. We also try to get tea that is very low or has no pesticide residues. Mm-hmm. We have all of our tea laboratory tested independently to confirm that they meet at a minimum European Union standards uh, because there's a lot of tea, especially tea in the United States, that can be filled with pesticides. The United States has no, almost no regulations on the pesticides that can be in tea. So, I was thinking because I got a friend that talks about weed the way you talk about tea, man. <laughs> like you, you got that medical tea up there. That's what you need, that <laughs> talk both shelf, herbal. that both herbal. gorilla glue tea i need that nate that's what we need here (laughs) sir um one of the coolest things man when we first started to chat was like we both have kids that are the same age how wild that is four (laughs) and one um being a successful business owner an entrepreneur um how do you find the balance between being a businessman and i'm speaking to you as a person i I always seek it as well to try to find the proper balance there is no one way but how do you find a balance um, between being a businessman and being a good father? It's, it's hard. You probably know it. It can be it can be hard some days. It can be challenging. You got to find time to work, and you got to find time to be with your children, and and I mean not just to be with them physically, but to be there mentally. And I don't I don't know if I can tell you how I do it. I'm still trying to learn how to do it every day. You know, I'm I'm trying to work on. It. I'm trying to get better every day. Recently, I feel like I've found a good balance, but that's only because we're we're our takeout and outdoor seating only right now, and I'm home like more or less six days, mm-hmm. and just really enjoying family time right now. Actually, like having pulling my hair out some days, and and some days just having like a great great time with my sons. Like we went to the we walked around the cemetery in our neighborhood the other day and just had a had a good good time. That sounds dark. <laughs> But no, yeah. all right, yeah. yeah. Cemetery, no, it's, all a, right. it's a beautiful cemetery. And I believe it. Yeah, yeah. 
and the four-year-old he wants to go and like fi- you know know who everybody's name is and and you yeah. know wants to spell their names he's trying to learn how to spell and that's you amazing know, man the other one's just looking at flowers and yeah. pointing out birds and right. you know whatever just just happy to be there yeah because he's one yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah four and one, four yeah. and one i they feel you they don't they don't know the the sad side of it they're just you know they're enjoying the grass and the, the being outside and you know yeah no you're right you're right all jokes anyway <laughs> cemeteries can be fun yeah. places <laughs> but. well i think one of the things um i always like to share is the main reason we see guests are generally three three areas um aches and pains improve sleep quality or stress and anxiety and as a business owner all the business owners i get i'm fortunate to talk with it's stress and anxiety man it it's mm-hmm. just is it's um and here's one i'm working with our daughter who is four her name's hope i'm working with hope for her to understand that excitement and anxiety are the exact same physiological reactions within the body the difference is up here you can be excited and have anxiety and it's positive it is all how it's framed but regardless we want to physiologically somewhat heal that with floating to be able to turn everything off it's one of the largest things stress reduction and as a business owner um i'm so excited to get you in the tank man um before we do what kind of questions do you have about floating i don't know i i I can't think of anything right now it's uh it's it's an hour long what's yes maybe maybe you could quickly talk me through the process <laughs> right yeah. on yeah. we'll get you through um but we'll get you in there you'll take a nice rinse you'll get in the tank you'll lay down music will play for a couple minutes uh to get you in and comfy and then it'll fade and you'll have an hour of silence the music comes on at the end let you know sessions up um, and when you get out is when you feel the effects especially your first float it's a delayed gratification where you're in there and your body's healing um your mind is exhaling and it's not until then you step out that you realize all of the benefits so it's always just give yourself the hour Uh, music comes on at the end the shower afterwards feels absolutely amazing Uh, it'll change your life um agreed but i was trying to think (laughs) (laughs) um another thing we like to do with our guests is for the people on the episodes, what we want to do is get a scale of where you're at right now, stress level, with everything going on, um, with business, family, life, one to ten. What's your stress level, Nate? Oh man, I, I think I'm so stressed. I don't know. I don't know where my gauge is right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty had, high. If yeah, you yeah. had to put a number on it, where would you be? That's pretty high. I'd say uh, probably eight or so. Wow. Yeah, that's I mean, that's that's cool. A lot of the numbers that are coming in are eights, which is troubling, but it, it's good to show like, you know, a lot of people are stressed right now. So with a little bit of magic, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to enjoy some mellow beats. And while Nate gets in for a 60 minute floats and we'll be right back to hear about his experience. I always like to think that we solve about. 42 percent of the world's problems out here the three of us while people are floating <laughs> why 42 percent well, we don't get all the way there and i wouldn't say we're quite half i mean we're sh- we have a short amount of time you give us probably 30 30 more minutes 40 Jeez, right, like 78 percent oh i was going 82 82 uh, all i was right. going 82 also 42 is already the answer to everything what that's this you better hit this no, 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 hit this metronome <laughs> it's already get, on, okay it's right it's on 42 on. okay talk to me 42 Jerry Stackhouse why is he the best why why 42 I don't no know. no no uh the that British writer which one yeah 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 Hitchhiker's got a galaxy <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> my man knew yeah, yeah, yeah. my man knew yeah yeah <laughs> yeah he knows um yeah very interesting man um going in for an hour like Let's see. Let's. So it may be tough, but as you sit here, just kind of, uh, you know, taking in your float and the effects. How would you describe, you know, how you feel physically? 
physically. Like when I was when I was floating, I could feel all the all the different parts of my body and and how they were kind of reacting to the floating and and really specifically how each part of me was feeling like they were mm-hmm. I could isolate them mentally and and I, I adjusted my arms as you suggested to kind of work on a specific part or two like my shoulders were really tight and mm. now they don't now they don't feel as tight because I kind of worked it out Good. as I was floating just sort of changing position and it it it, it really felt like taking a weight off of everything just mm. I, I we were back there kind of doing your walkthrough. You had showed you had some tightness in your shoulders. Where did you find a po- did you find a position that helped with your shoulders? Yeah, the like hands behind my head, like you right like on. you suggested, was was great. I tried um, moving them up a little bit, moving them down to my sides, and then I felt like a kind of a you know a pop, like if you, you crack a knuckle or something, mm. but but right right in my back like behind between my shoulders and that it, it it felt great and it it ended up you know being that that was kind of the moment where they they kind of everything kind of relaxed really well it was mm. like things were kind of moving back in place you know like, you caught your stride yeah man. you caught yeah, your yeah. stride um even a more challenging question for people when they come out especially their first one how would you describe how your mind feels yeah i I feel like this will be an easy question for me. It was it was um, something I, I experience a lot when falling asleep or or I mean people call it you hear it shower thoughts or something too where you're you you have a sort of mental fluidity and and it's a little bit meditative. Mm. Um, in this case, maybe even like abyssal, mm. but in a good way. Right. On. Um, just a a, a clarity and and a fluidity that comes with having no distractions and and nothing else going on we we always have a lot of distractions around you know life's full of distractions very well said very well said and especially owning a business right like you said uh pre-float you touched on how we never really get time off you know i I can empathize very well with at any time an email can come in a supply can go wrong a shipment can not be there um so I'm really curious, how was that silence for you initially? It was comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Good. I don't, don't get silence a lot. So it was, it was automatically comfortable. There was a, there was um, also time to kind of uh, meditate on, like I was saying physically, like, you know, aspects of my body I don't get to focus on and, mm. and think about, you know, why are my shoulders tight and, and uh the rhythm of you know focus on like the rhythm of my breathing and things things like that 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 come from like a medic good meditative state uh, comfort and silence so. yeah um I, it's it's one of the most interesting things uh, to see guests after their first float I, I mean it really is and that's why you being your this being your first float i thought it's so important to um just get you in the tank like preloading everything and telling you how great it is and how it will reduce your stress. And you came in very open about the experience. But even the most open-minded folks um, present some level of skepticism, Mm -hmm. right? You just have to. The same way, you know, if you go into a yoga studio for the first time or acupuncture or chiropractor, there's always some level of skepticism. Um, But now on the other side, what are the other side of the experience having floated for an hour? What are your thoughts? It's, it's really, as you described, I don't think there was any, any BS or, you know, any, any, uh, anything unexpected. I mean, it, it was, it was rejuvenating. Um, it was really relaxing. It was really a great way to, to just kind of think through things and, and good meditative, good meditative experience. I don't know. Good. No, absolutely, man. That's that's very true. One thing, Troy, um, having floated, having enjoying tea as much as you do, enjoying floating as much as you do, can you see these things pairing together? Yeah, definitely. Um, 
I tend to be more of a caffeinated tea drinker, but when you talk about the side of like herbal tea or even things like uh, chamomile, like things that are kind of like calming to aid this feeling that you already have. I think it would pair really well. Or, I mean, if you do have to go out back into the day after a float, something lightly caffeinated could help. That'll just give you a light boost, but not take away the mental clarity and easiness going on. Mm, Understood. I guess we're sitting here with the tea guru and we're talking about it. Let's kick it to him. What tea would pair well with this experience? I think Troy was, Troy is pretty pretty close to accurate on this um he's he's got some tea experience now since we've been working together and i guess it would depend too on what what point in the day you're you're floating if mm-hmm. you were floating in the morning maybe after something caffeinated would be all right but i think in the evening you definitely want to go herbal mm. um just to really nail home that that relaxation something um something that's gonna pair very well with the float nice. It's definitely, you definitely feel relaxed after after floating. Right know? on. Yeah, yeah. And the nice thing is you guys are located right up the street, right? Yeah. Your hours at your tea house are? Well, right now they're a little bit different than, than usual. We are, we are noon until 8 o'clock every day except Sunday. Uh, and Sunday we are 10 to 6. Understood. So. Understood. Nate, it was super great to have you in studio here, man. Um, like I said visited your tea house absolutely love it i think you're fascinating can you tell me the story of why everything gets to 42 it's the it's the x it's the answer it's not the question so it's what type of yoda shit was that troy man i do not know it's chicken before the egg type thing you know yeah question answer which is it so so they built a machine to figure out the answer to the life, the universe, and everything. And the answer was 42, but they didn't know what the question was. So they need to build another machine to figure out what the question is in in the universe. <laughs> but the answer was 42. Absolutely love it, man. Yeah. Absolutely love it. Nate, you're such a pleasure to have in here, man. I think you're a great soul. Um, you're one of us now, my man. Um, where can the people Why find you? You can find us online at Dobra Tea PGH, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Our website's com, and you can find us at the corner of Murray and Beacon in Squirrel Hill, 1937 Murray Avenue. And, yeah, stop down for some tea. Also, if you are not in the area, do you ship tea? We do. We do. How we, can we go about that? We have it uh, for sale online on our website. Uh, we have seasonal updates as well. Every time we get a new shipment, they go on, on the website, and we ship anywhere in the United States. Awesome, folks. If you're listening to this in Pittsburgh or far away, whichever land you're in, check it out. It is com. Get yourself some tea. If you're in the neighborhood, if you're in the beautiful, walkable neighborhood of Squirrel Hill, swing by, get yourself a fresh cup. Nate's a super good guy. Any questions, Troy? No questions, but uh, isn't there a special announcement between the two of you? Nate, do you think w- there's any tea that we could serve here at Levity that would pair well? I believe so, Dave. <gasps> oh, yeah. Interesting. Collab alert, collab alert. What tea do yeah. you think would go well here, sir? We have a few great herbal blends that I think we'll be showcasing here at Levity. Um, something like our... Eastern Winds blend, which is a mixture of flowers and spices commonly used in the Middle East and Asia for different herbal effects or flavors. Mm. And the summertime, I think we'll showcase a few really delicious herbal iced teas that mm. are relaxing naturally and would be great even in the evening after, after a comfortable float. Right on. You're the man, Nate. Lots of love. All those listening will be able to serve fresh local Dobra tea and like I said if you're far away don't sweat it you heard the man talk about how they do things their quality control Dobra tea PGH that's going to be it for us on this episode if you like what you heard and it sounded like Nate was super relaxed afterwards Nate one to ten where are you at now stress wise yes sir Ooh, much lower yeah yeah like three four 
three to four. That's yeah, a good yeah. reduction. Yeah, yeah. My man, if those relaxing benefits sound good for you, hop over to scheduleyourfloat.com. Get yourself right with a 60 or 90 minute float. Come in and check us out. Lots of love, Nate. It was great having Thank you, you in Dave. here.